Imagine this, you're scrolling online to find cool and action packed games to play. You stumble upon on Amazon to find some used games, but while looking through the long list of games, you find one name play. And no, this isn't a joke. Arlay was a simulator game that was once being sold on Amazon, but this isn't the only controversial game, as there have been numerous games that have been created, and we'll be looking at them in this video. Let's begin with Border Patrol. Border Patrol is a flash based game that lets players shoot at Mexican immigrants as they try to cross the border into the United States. As described on the main menu, the one simple objective to the game is to keep them out at any cost. On the right side, it shows the three specific targets that you need to aim for, which consist of the Mexican national list, drug smugglers, and the breeders. Screenshots of the game have resurfaced that show how negatively stereotyped the game is towards Mexicans. The screenshot catches a woman with her children crossing the border, on the sign, it also shows that there's a welfare office nearby for those crossing. The screenshot also shows all three groups running across the border. Sadly, this isn't the first and only time a racist stereotypical game has become well known. Other games such as Ethnic Cleansing and Spanish for Everyone were also pretty bad. 177 is a game where the player takes the role of a who is chasing a young girl. There are small obstacles such as dogs and hedges to stop the man but he can also throw rocks at the girl to slow her down. The player loses if she manages to arrive at her home. Now, if you catch her, the man you're playing as will f*** her, but the way the game is designed, there's alternate endings. The player has to press multiple buttons in the sequence to satisfy her. If the man gives her pleasure, he ends up marrying her, but if he doesn't, he ends up getting arrested. But yeah, that's pretty much the entirety of the game. The title of the game, 177, refers to the Penal Code 1908, Article 177, in the Japanese Criminal Code, which establishes the legislation of underage 177 is part of a video game genre known as Bushido. These types of games focus on a man's interactions with an attractive woman. The intentions behind these types of video game genres have been heavily questioned and for the right reason. There have been numerous examples where they have taken it too far, and this is just one of them. Nevada's Blade is based on a real-life case known as the Sasebo Slashing, or Nevada Tin Murder. The case involved the murder of a 12-year-old Japanese schoolgirl, Tatumi Mitari, by another classmate who was never identified because of her young age. However, it was later identified that the girl's actual name was Natsumi Suji. On June 1, 2004, Natsumi Suji stabbed Satomi in an empty classroom during the lunch hour at a Koboko Elementary School in Sasebo, Nagasaki. Natsumi explained that she managed to get the girl in the room by simply telling her to follow her. In the classroom, she told her to take a seat while she was closing the curtains. Unexpectedly, she would then stab her numerous times with a box cutter knife. The teacher in the classroom noticed that both girls were missing at this point. Natsumi would eventually make her way back to the classroom while covered in blood. When questioned on what happened, the girl explained that it wasn't her blood. Putting the pieces together, the teacher would find Satomi in an empty classroom while laying lifeless on the ground. When Natsumi was brought to the police, she would explain her motives. Despite them being close friends, they had problems before the incident. According to Natsumi, Satomi had made rude comments and would bully her online. Eventually, she snapped and made a plan on how she would murder her. A year after the case, a Japanese journalist named Atsuko Kusanagi would document the case and bring up accusations that Natsumi's father abused her, but this was never fully proven, and even if it was proven, it wouldn't be a good reason on why she murdered the girl in the first place. She was sentenced to a total of 4 years of involuntary commitment, and will be released back to the general population in May 2008. Till this day, her current whereabouts are unknown. Going back to the game, it's a simple fighting game that takes place in a classroom with both girls. The player plays the role of Natsumi, and it involves you having to defeat Satomi using the box cutter knife. In this case, Satomi can't attack back and is completely harmless to you. I'll have to blur basically the entire footage, but to make things even worse, both of the girls' faces were used on the characters. That's essentially the entire game, and it's basically just for shock value. Arlay was a Japanese game that was released in 2006 by the company Illusion. The game revolves around you playing the role of a male character, named Misaya. The objective of the game is to stalk and a mother and her two daughters, who happen to be 12 and 17 years old. 
At the start of the game, you're told that Messiah has a history of previous arrests and that his father is a well-known politician. One day at the subway train, Messiah is caught touching a woman and eventually gets arrested. The next day, both daughters help their mothers try to locate her wallet that she lost around the nearby area. While this is happening, one of the daughters talk about how they helped with the arrest of a man yesterday and how he did a terrible thing to her. Little did they know, Messiah was eavesdropping the entire time while he was waiting outside his house. Anyways, it should be mentioned that while he was listening to them, he learned that the mother is a widow. Because of this, he plans to take revenge on all of them, starting with the youngest daughter. After a while, he follows Manika to the subway station. While waiting on a train, he touches her numerous times. When they arrive at the first stop, he kidnaps her and takes her to the public bathroom, where he does very inappropriate and bad things that I won't mention. The next day, he would follow the mother Yuko to the city park and do undescribable things. After every encounter, Misaya takes a picture of his victims, as it's believed as a way to traumatize them even more, knowing that they've been caught on camera during their most vulnerable times. But we would later learn that the pictures would be shown to the last daughter. Once again, he would capture the last daughter and take her to a family-owned hotel. The main story ends with Misaya keeping them all captive in a secret room and using them for his pleasure. There are two other endings known as the black and red ending, which involves Misaya dying in both of them. Now, as mentioned before, the game was released in 2006, and with a plot as disturbing as this, you expected to receive major backlash right away. What turns out, it took three years until 2009 for Arlay to finally receive a bad reputation. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that the game didn't receive negative criticism while it was only available in Japan. The main reason it received attention in 2009 was because it started to be sold on Amazon. And this was especially weird because it was never officially distributed nor supported outside of Japan. Arlay would start to make news headlines, and this resulted in Amazon eventually banning the game. Till this day, many countries such as Argentina and Australia have also banned the distribution of the game. But despite all of the hatred towards Arlay, there was a small group of people who thought the game was great. There have been articles written that have defended the game, with the main argument stating that is considered a lesser crime than murder, yet there are thousands of legal video games in which the goal is to kill enemies. Alright, so that just made no sense. Illusion eventually came forward with their take on the entire situation, since during the time, there was a campaign launched by Equality Now, a New York-based company that was against simulator games in Japan. Illusion was confused about the campaign since they made the game for the domestic market in Japan and abided by the laws there, so they couldn't comment on the campaign because they didn't intend to sell it overseas. Illusion ended up making a sequel to the game with the title Real Play in March 2014. From what I read online, it had some of the same aspects of Arlay, but not as extreme. Twisted Metal Black is a combat game that's part of the Twisted Metal series. What separated Twisted Metal Black from the other games was how controversial some of the cutscenes were. The game was released back in 2001, and brutal video games were essentially unheard of, well, at least to the standards of 2001. When these specific scenes were shown, a ton of players were disturbed and eventually had to be censored in some parts of the world, specifically in Europe. Some notable cutscenes that were heavily edited or removed were Sweet Tooth's intro's cutscene, Brimstone's ending scene in the church, John Doe's ending scene, and many other characters' intro scenes as well. Regarding Sweet Tooth's intro, a ton of violence and blood splatter was completely removed in the EU version. Even during the ending scene, where he gets a bottle of blood from his victim, and it's explained by Calypso that if he drinks it, all of his curses will be removed. Without even thinking for a split second, Sweet Tooth would slice Calypso's head off, but in the EU version of the game, this isn't a scene. Brimstone's ending scene was also edited as in the original version, he kills a ton of people in the church, as he believes that he's been possessed by a demon baby to kill everyone. Eventually, Brimstone learned from Calypso that his demon he's speaking of is all just part of his imagination, which the scene then ends off with him himself. However, once again, this isn't shown in the EU version. A lot of major cutscenes that showcase the background stories of the characters were also essentially taken away. So this meant that there were a ton of awkward scenes that cut straight to the action without telling the player on what just happened. This would also impact the loading screen. Even though the loading screen is shown, 
there's missing text that talks about the character story and instead just awkwardly shows the characters that you'll be using in a specific portion of this game. Out of all the censorship in the game, this one confused me the most. I even looked up the transcript for each loading screen and I could find nothing bad at all. After all edits, roughly one hour of video footage was taken away. The only acceptable scene that was taken away was in the beginning that involved an airplane being shot down and hitting a building in the US version, comparing it to the EU version in which the game has already crashed. By the time Twisted Metal Black was released in Europe on December 7th, 2001, it had just been a couple of months after 9-11, so it made sense that the specific scene needed to be removed. Many other games and different forms of media were also already doing this, so it only made sense that the game would also do this. Mad World is a beat-em-up hack and slash game developed by Platinum Games and published by Sega. What made this game so controversial was the excessive violence and cruel language used in the game, and how it was released on the Wii, which was deemed to be a family-friendly console. The two main features that stood out in Mad World was its animation style, which was primarily black and white in visuals, except whenever there was blood. The other feature was its over-the-top violence, specifically towards the end of boss fights where the players could perform a special kill move that was unique to the particular fight. To many parents, these scenes of violence were too much for a family-friendly console. Practically every M-rated game on the Wii was looked down upon. However, this was the perspective from the parents. A ton of the players actually thought that the deaths in the game were funny and cartoonish in a way. For example, there's a character named Black Baron who takes the role of a game show host and appears numerous times in cutscenes. However, he dies a bunch of times in possibly one of the most goofiest ways. But even with this, Mad World was still hated on. At the time of the game's release, the director of Media Watch, John Bayer, expressed his taste over the game's content. Media Watch UK is an organization that works against violent media, and so they made an effort to not provide a rating for the game for the BBFC, and because of this, it was banned from being sold within the country. John Bayer stated that they needed to ensure that modern and civilized values take priority rather than killing and maiming people. And this is what I never understood on why people think that violent games lead to violent actions. It's even worse when a small extreme example that rarely happens occurs and it's often generalized that if one person had committed such a horrible crime, that means a whole ton of other people will. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. But it wouldn't just stop in the UK, as in August 2008, Sega announced that Mad World wouldn't be released in Germany. Eventually, a Nintendo representative came forward and explained that the Wii is a system for anybody, including adults, and that the game, like all video games, would be rated and would therefore be available for purchase to people of and above that age rating. And that's the end of today's video. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching and showing support. If you want me to cover certain topics or even make a part 2 for this video, just let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching, showing support, and for sticking with the channel. The channel's 3 year anniversary is almost here, and I'm truly grateful for the audience I have right now. But yeah, that's the end of today's video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.